All right, this is notes 11.6, applications of logs. Okay, we've done this stuff similar uh, before. Typing in or just putting in for A and P and R and N T, R being our rate. <coughs> N being the number of times compounded uh, annually, T being my time, uh, A is my wannabe amount, okay, it's what I want in the end, P is my principal, it's the amount that I'm putting up the front. Okay, but now the only difference is we're using logs to solve them. Uh, first one we don't have to because it's gonna you're gonna see it comes out nice and clean. So A, P, R, N, and T. Okay. Now it says Cordy wants to have five thousand. So that means she wants her ending amount to be five thousand. So that's my A. Okay. All right, and she wants that in her account after 12 years, so my time is 12. Okay, 7% interest compounded quarterly, so 7% interest, so my rate is 0 0.07. We have to convert it to decimal, and it's compounded quarterly. Quarterly means how many times? Four. Four times a year, so N is four. Okay, so clearly I'm missing the P, so here we go. A equals... Oh, um, let's not do that, sorry. 5,000 equals P1 plus R, which was 0.07 over N, which is 4, all raised to the N, which is 4, times time, which is 12. So all I'm going to do on this one, super easy, I'm solving for P, so I'm going to take this, divide it under this. Okay, so whatever this comes out to, I'm going to divide 5,000 by it. Okay, so we can go ahead and put this part in our calculator because there's no variables here. All right, so we take our handy dandy calculator, parentheses, one plus, one plus, one plus, 0.07 over four, close them, raise to the, four times 12 is 48, right? And it gives me that. Okay, so I'm gonna take 5,000, divided by answer, so second minus sign gives me an answer, so all I did was I hit second minus sign, and that gave me the answer, for second minus sign to get answered. That's okay, or negative, whatever. Okay, hit enter, and it tells me 21.74.29, so we're talking money here. So when I divided all that out, my P equaled $2,174.30. That would, that would be how much my initial amount to invest would be to have 5,000 after 12 years that are in 7% compounded quarterly. Okay? Oh, 29 cents, not 30. My bad, I don't know why I rounded. 29 cents. Okay. All right, so now here we go again. A, P, R, N, T. So suppose Heather has 2,000 to invest. So she has 2,000 as her principal. Um, and an account earns 10% interest, so 0 0.10. Uh, compounded semi-annually, that is two times a year. She wants to leave the money in the account until it's grown to 5,000. So that you can see this is different than we've done before. We've never had both our A and P. We're always either solving for A or P. So now that tells her right now I have to use logs to solve it. How long must she leave it in two? We don't know what our T is. So we fill into our formula. A is 5,000 equals our P, which is 2,000. 1 plus R, which is 0 0.10 over N, which is 2, all raised to the 2 times T power, so 2T. Okay? All right, so far so easy. So first thing, we're going to start undoing this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 2,000 to get rid of the multiplied by 2,000. 5,000 divided by 2,000 is 2.5 equals, we can go ahead and do the math on what's inside the parentheses. So that's 1 plus... 0.10 over 2, hit enter, and it's 
0.05 raised to the 2t power. So now I can take that, convert it to a log. So what's the base? 1.05, One, right? Yep. So the base is the exponent, so that's log base 1.05 and then 2.5 equals 2t. Okay? So remember our exponent always goes to the opposite side. So I take and I put that in my calculator. Math arrow up twice. Log 1.05, 2.5. Hit enter, and then I'm going to divide it by two, right? To solve for t, you got to divide by two. So I'm going to divide by two, and that tells me t is 9.390. Okay, we'll go three decimal places. So t equals 9.390. That's how much time she must leave that in there. Okay, next one. Base. Uh, A P R N T. So Scott invests five thousand, so that means that he's putting it five thousand in there right up front. So that's my P at eight percent. So that's point zero eight. Compounded quarterly. You already told me quarterly is four. Uh, how long will it be in there before his investment grows to 14000 So our final is 14000 We don't know the time again, so we're doing exactly what we just did. So we put in 14000 plus, I'm oh, sorry, not plus, equals 5000 one plus my rate, which is 0 0.08, over n, which is 4 raised to the 4t power, because we don't know the time. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, same as I did on the one before, divide by 5,000, and that leaves me 14,000, divided by 5,000, 2.8, equals, and then we do the math on this right here, 1 plus, 0.08 over 4, hit enter, 1.02 raised to the 4t power. So I'm going to convert this exponent to a log. What's the base? 1.02. 1.02. Log base 1.02. 2.8 equals 4t. So I'm going to get this, then I'm going to divide it by 4, right? To solve for t. So, mass log base 1.02, 2.8, enter, divided by 4, gives me 12.999, because I'm going to round that guy up, because that's a 5. So it was like 13 years. Yeah, 12.999, okay, you can put approximately 13 years, that's up to you. Formula, same stuff, just plug and play. <coughs> okay, half life. Okay, when we're doing half life, you guys may have done this stuff already in science, but uh, NO is my original amount, so however much of whatever the, uh, the radioactive, like whatever the substance is, we want to know what, how long to take it to decay to its half life, it so it becomes half of what it actually is. <laughs> so whether it's sulfur, from chromium, whatever, it gives all different kinds of elements. Okay, so this would be the original amount. Okay, this is the amount that's there at the end. It's kind of like the ones we did before. It's what you want your final amount to be. Okay, H obviously half life. T is my time. Okay, so here we go. And N O means that no time has started yet. H and T. Okay, so that's another way to remember it is with the little zero on it means zero time has gone by. Okay, so that, uh, that half-life of sulfur-35 isotope is 87.1 days. So my, is 87.1 is my half-life. 
how much of a two gram sample will remain after 100 days. So a two gram sample, that tells me what it is now. Okay, and then after 100 days, that's my time. So all I have to do is plug it straight into this one, just plug straight into my formula and solve it. So N equals two, one half, raised to T, which is 100, divided by 87.1. Okay, so we take, put that in our calculator, two, just like it looks, parentheses, one half, close them, raised, parentheses, or not parentheses, but a fraction, 100 over 87.1, hit enter, and it tells me 0 0.902. So there would be 0 0.902 uh, grams left, okay, after 100 days. Okay, number five, N, N, O, H, and T. Okay, so one isotope of chromium has a half-life of 23 hours. How long does it take a 50 gram? So it starts off at 50 to decay to 40, so our final amount 40. So we now know since the top two were given, we're gonna have to have a log out of it, no big deal. So we put in our formula, N is 40 equals 50, and then parentheses one half, raised to the T, which we don't know, divided by H, which is 23, okay? All right, so now, first thing, just like we did on the front, I wanna get rid of this multiplication, so I divide by 50, that cancels off. I've got 40 divided by 50 is 0.8. And then to one half T to the 20 over 23. So what is my base? What's my base on this guy? 0.5 or one half. So log one half and then 0.8 equals T over 23. So now whatever I get with this, in order to solve for t, I'm going to multiply this by 23, okay? So math, log base, 0.5 or 1 half, however you want to do it, okay? And 0.8, hit enter, multiply by 23, and it tells me 7.404. So t equals 7.0. Or, I'm sorry, four, zero, four, and we are talking, it doesn't say hours, right? So hours. So, okay, and our last one, N, N, O, so that's our beginning amount, half-life, time. If 25 kilograms of a 100 kilogram sample of carbon remain after 12,000 years, calculate the half-life of the carbon, so we're missing half-life. So 25 remains of the original 100, okay, 12,000 years, we don't know the half-life. So we start typing them in, 25 equals 100, Parentheses, one half raised to our time, which is 12,000 over H, which we don't know. So first thing I wanna do is divide by 100. 25 divided by 100 is 0.25, right? Equals one half raised to the 12,000 over H. So base is, so log base, one half, right? And then 0.25 equals 12,000 over H. So I've got to get this guy here, and then I'm going to end up dividing it by 12,000. Okay, because now it's on the top, right? So it's being divided by H, do the opposite. Okay, we 
to flip it, do opposite to be able to get the other side. So we have log and we have what? One half. And then we add 0.25. Hit enter. And we're going to divide that by 12,000. And that gives me oh, 1.6. 666E is up four, and now let me see if I can convert that. Let me back up. Uh, so this was two equals 12,000. I'm sorry, you gotta divide 12,000 by it, my fault. Okay, sorry, I skipped a step. So this equals two, okay? So get rid of my H, multiply. So that's two H equals 12,000. Now divide by two. 12,000 divided by two is 6,000. There we go. Years. Okay. We're going to do a 11, 6. We're going to do numbers. Let's do numbers. Um, <coughs> second on 11, 6. We'll do number one, three. So we'll do one, three, four, seven, and eight. Okay, this concludes the notes for 11.6.